Hey there guys, we are back with the Minnesota Gopher Dynasty and we are 3-2 and two after we came from behind to beat Iowa on the road last week. 35-28 to 28, and now we have the pig back at the bank. That's right, we got the pig, the bacon, and we're facing against Northwestern today. But before we get into the game, I want to ask you guys, put in the comments section below, what's your favorite college football team? I might use the most answered comment or the most favorite team, I should say, in an upcoming series and we'll be starting soon. So right off the bat, here we go, Northwestern, 4-2 and two on the season. They like to run this spread offense behind a junior quarterback, Kane Coulter, and he's an athletic quarterback. Last time we faced an athletic option-type quarterback was UNLV in Las Vegas, and we struggled mightily in that game. We actually came down with a last-second loss in that, that game. So here we go, Northwestern once again. We've got some pressure, and Coulter's going to run off and look at making my defense look very old right off the bat. So uh, Coulter once again... The scrambling, he fumbled actually, but he got out of bounds. Coulter once again steps back. We got a three-man rush, and I got zone defense in the back, and look at this. Kyle Prater, the sophomore wide receiver, comes down with a hell of a catch. So they got three wide receivers set on the right. They're going to go with the option, thinking he's going to pitch it off, and Coulter runs it in himself. So it's 7-0 in first quarter. I got Marquise Gray stepping back in the pocket. They're going to bring the blitz. And Will Hampton, the junior defensive tackle, is going to scoop it up and get in the end zone. And this crowd has got to be stunned with this early lead for Northwestern. Just right off the bat, the defense coming up big for Northwestern off that blitz. It's 14-0. Yeah, that is right. It is already 14-0. And Coulter hands off to Trayvon Green, the sophomore halfback for Northwestern. And he gets himself a first down. So I'm having a hard time here trying to stop this, off, this spread, this offense. And basically... Uh, you're trying to read the option, and uh, finally, uh, you know, I'm bringing some pressure on the outsides, and Coulter just keeps on bringing it down. And look at this, making my defense look very slow. Obviously, that's an issue I'm going to have to address during the offseason is getting some defensive players who actually have good awareness and good agility and speed. I'm going to talk a little bit about, maybe in a future episode, different position players and what you want to look for in attributes because that's going to be important when you're trying to build a team like I am here with Minnesota. Obviously, my defense not looking very good against an agile quarterback like Coulter, but finally we bring him down here on this third down and goal, and he gets injured. This is actually the second time he got injured in the game. He would come back for a third time and get injured again. Northwestern's uh, backup Trevor Seaman, a sophomore quarterback, actually gets quite a bit of playing time in this game because Coulter gets injured quite a bit. And it doesn't really matter because Seaman comes in, and you'll see in a couple plays here and there that he'll actually do the same thing that Coulter does. And I just thought that maybe the CPU was cheesing me in this game. And you can see here, trying to get something going offensively. Marquise Gray stepped back in the pocket. We finally find an open guy, and he just can't come down with the catch. So we'll have to look at that in the offseason and see who can actually step up for wide receivers and tight ends. I do like to use my tight ends, but they're, they're not coming down with the catch. Coulter, we try to put some pressure in his face, and he still finds Kyle Prater. Kyle Prater having a big game so far for the Northwestern Wildcats. Coulter, look at this. I got, I'm look at it. I have my you see my defensive tackles. Look at the offensive lineman jiggling around. I was uh, getting sick of the spread offense, the option plays, and look at this. Northwestern rubbed it in my face with a fake punt, and I can't come up with the tackle there. Uh, didn't see that coming. So Northwestern with a fake punt, they really want to come away with the victory here at TCF Bank Stadium today, and they get a first down there in that fake punt attempt, and so. Northwestern keeps the ball, but the, finally our defense steps it up. They're going to settle for a field goal here uh, at the end of the second quarter on a 4th and 11. I was anticipating they might actually fake a field goal attempt, but it's now 20-0. to And I got my defense back on the field with a minute left here in the second period before halftime. Coulter gets some pressure in his face, and he's going to find Kyle Prater once again. It's just unbelievable. I had double coverage on him, too. It's third and goal. Coulter steps in. The, oh, he's going to come and scramble. Or oh, finally get him a tackle. It's fourth and goal. We use a timeout. And they're going to go for a field goal try here. It's going to be 23 to 0 here going into halftime. I'm getting embarrassed here by the Northwestern Wildcats. Having a hard time trying to stop this option. Look at that. I got blitzes coming to the left side, anticipating this run and still. <laughs> Missed tackles, another missed tackle, a good block, and another missed tackle, another missed tackle. No one can tackle anyone right now today. The Gophers just getting annihilated here. Bringing the blitz once again. I got to put some pressure here on the Northwestern Wildcats. Finally coming down with the sack. There we go. That's what I'm talking about, boys. Here, fourth and 18. They're going to go for a long field goal. It is good. 
So once again, Northwestern just getting every single... I think the difference in this is that Northwestern converting third downs, Minnesota Gophers not getting their third down conversions, and that's the difference in this game. It's 26-0, and it's a landslide. Look at this. They're going to come with the option of Lawrence. This is what Northwestern likes to run. My defense cannot stop it. We had a problem against UNLV trying to stop this type of offense, and it's coming on display here, but the difference is in my offense can't get anything going against Northwestern's defense. Look at that. Oh, getting embarrassed deep there by uh, Rashard Lawrence, the junior wide receiver. He comes down with a touchdown catch. It is already now 32-0. The, the route is on here. Let's go. Come on, offense. We got to get something going here. And so we're, we're going to be passing most of the game now. Marquise Gray, probably not the best quarterback to be throwing the ball. Andre McDonald, my freshman wide receiver, who actually caught the touchdown to beat Iowa last week. There we're going to find, oh, yep, that's Malcolm Moulton, the junior wide receiver for the Gophers. And so Marquise Gray, not too bad, 12-18, only 100 yards though in its third quarter. And this is my issue, another drop pass for the Gophers. So we're going to have to really... Constant. I know we're not recruiting too heavily in offense, but these wide receivers got to catch these balls because we're not doing anything offensively. And here is, oh, Kyle Prater coming down with a beautiful catch. Uh, CPU be cheesing me today, I think, because they're getting every single break, and they're still running the hurry-up offense with the third quarter ticking away, and they got a 30-point victory. So the CPU and th these sliders are the same sliders that I used to beat Iowa. So you know Northwestern's just bringing their A game today. Coulter, look at that. Step back in the pocket. As soon as he gets hit, he finds Green, and Green breaks a tackle. He gets a first down. They're just, they're, everything's going their way. I'm bringing the blitz. Coulter steps back in the pocket, and he's going to go into the end zone. And it is just, the route is on. This is embarrassing. I didn't think, this must be a fake video. Why am I uploading the, this embarrassing loss, right? But no, this happens. My defense obviously was one of the worst defenses last year in the college football. And look at the Prater gets injured once again. But Seaman comes in at quarterback. And there's going to be a lot of Seaman in, in Northwestern tonight. Yep, because they're going to be partying with this victory. And it is first, ten, first and 10. You thought this was a PG-13 rated video. And here we are. Look at that. Dancing around with Cooper. I'm figuring that he's going to be busting another run. But he's going to find Kyle Prater, my zone is just not working this <laughs> and he's got five receptions 431 yards so you can see here i'm uh, doing my qb contain and expecting the run so i'm forcing him to pass and my defense in the backfield just not playing very well i can't wait to recruit some guys who are going to play a little bit better this is embarrassing 46 to 3 and look at that did you see the fans they changed their jerseys <laughs> they they are embarrassed to be wearing those gopher jerseys and they're going to be leaving the stadium here and so we bring in Max Shortell, the backup quarterback. Finally, we got to get some offense going. We're going to find Malcolm Moulton. Air, no, I'm sorry, that's Andre McDonald, the freshman wide receiver. And, yeah, Northwestern comes away with an easy victory here. So we're going to move to 3-3 three and three in the season. The Northwestern Wildcats to 5-2. and two. Yeah, 47-11. And Kane Coulter, look at those numbers. 12-16, 192 yards passing, 22 carries, almost 200 yards on the ground unbelievable performance he's definitely be a player of the week in the big 10 if not in the country so we could not stop the option that's going to be an issue facing against like michigan and those tampa teams so hope you guys enjoyed the episode and i will talk to you guys later